Halloween is my favorite time of year, more than anything. I love decorating my front yard. It started when I was a kid. My parents always had elaborate decorations, and I kept the trend going with my own family. It bonded us. I love doing it. On top of that, my neighborhood had a bit of a reputation for going all out on Halloween time. It was a perfect fit. When we first moved into the neighborhood, we kind of set the standard for decorations. My graveyard scenes were always elaborate, but when we moved into the house, I went above and beyond. I added touches of flair, lights, smoke, some small animatronics, really made a life-size diorama out of it. I easily won the challenge the first five years, but after the fifth year, everyone else on our street upped their games. Before too long, our street was the most trick-or-treated street in the town. Honestly, it was a sight to behold. So many people coming together to scare the living hell out of each other. It was... It was sweet. In a horror movie kind of way. It was around this time that the Johnsons moved in down the street. Tom and Joyce and their little boy Joey. The nicest people. His wife makes an amazing lemon bar. And we're great friends. Eleven months out of the year. But around Halloween time... The Johnsons become my sworn enemy. Tom and Joyce work for a theme park. I'll let you guess. I'll let you guess which one. And they went all out at the holidays. The first year, they had their own graveyard scene that was, to be honest, nothing short of amazing. It far outdid my unearthed graves. It was clear they won the contest. I took it in stride, but the next day I started planning what I could do for the following year. That was petty, I know, but I wanted to win. I lost five years running. Last week at a barbecue, Tom let it slip that they were working on a lab scene. I had tried that the last few years, but the results were mixed. I decided that I wanted to go back to a graveyard scene. In my spare time, I had been looking at how-to videos about creating more lifelike decorations, how to build cheap but effective animatronics, scouring Craigslist for supplies, and looking up various Pinterest boards. I know, I wanted to punch myself too, in order to have the better looking yard. I felt that with all the decorations I already had, the ones I found on Craigslist, and my new knowledge, I was ready to win it all again. The Johnsons be damned, this was my year. The week before I was going to break out the decorations and get started, we had one of the most intense thunderstorms we've ever had in these parts. I felt like any minute I'd look out my window and see the Wicked Witch flying on a broom. We made plans just in case a tornado touched down, but nothing but hard rain fell. When the storm ceased, I went into my garage to prepare my decorations and was gutted. The roof in the garage had a leak right above where I stored my supplies. Everything was ruined. My hopes of winning back my crown were dashed in a heartbeat. For a minute, I thought that maybe this was the best. I had spent a lot of spare time planning for this, and I had a honeydew list that was growing by leaps and bounds. Maybe I was too into the competition. This was... this was probably healthy. I was planning on telling my family that we'd do a simple display this year, but then my kids spent the night at their friend's house, and my wife worked late. I was alone, had the entire internet to help solve my problem, and I decided as a last-ditch effort to see what cheap supplies I could find online. If there was nothing, I'd throw in the towel. That's when I saw an ad on Craigslist that caught my attention. Can't keep these things anymore. Halloween. I was weird enough to warrant a click, and I, I'm glad I did. Inside, someone was getting rid of years worth of Halloween decorations. I called right away, and I told them that I'd be there in 10 minutes to pick it up. The house was a bit off the beaten path, but nothing too crazy. The owner, on the other hand, tiptoed into Nutsoville. She said her name was Shade, which, whatever, it's a Craigslist spy, and that she was going to be moving soon. There wasn't any moving boxes or anything. I didn't know if she had been honest, but I mean, I didn't care. She told me that she had held on to these things for as long as she had to, but she had to get rid of them now. There were several trunks. I had hit the mother load. I pulled out my wallet and she stopped me. She said I could have them for free. 
I asked to see what was inside, but she really didn't want me opening them there. She said they were so tightly packed, it might cause a mess. I wanted to make sure I wasn't inheriting someone's junk, so I insisted. She sighed and ducked back into the house. When she returned, I noticed that she had put on a handsome necklace. I asked about it, but she either didn't hear me or ignored me. It was probably some Etsy thing, so I just let it slide and I cracked open the first trunk. There were bones. Not a complete skeleton, but odds and ends. Some cloaks, cauldrons, headstones. It was incredible. They were high quality stuff too. I, I asked if she wanted anything for them and she said no. I shrugged, loaded them into my truck and thanked her for the supplies. She muttered something under her breath and then slammed the front door. I wanted to get far away from shade as possible so I bolted home. When I got there I dragged everything into the garage and I unloaded everything. It was better than I could have ever hoped for. There were at least five Full skeletons, two witch hats, few brooms, lanterns, vials with red and blue and green water in them, and so much more. I, I sketched out the design I wanted for the yard and was so pleased with myself. I might not have the animatronics I wanted, but these looked so good I might not need it. I started setting up the yard when my wife got home with the kids. They were jazzed about the props, but my wife was confused. I told her that all my old supplies got ruined in the storm and that I'd gotten all these for free online. I told her... It was Kismet. She was dumbfounded. I swore that I hadn't spent a dime on one, save for the cost of gas to go pick them up. And as an added bonus, we got five new steamer trunks for free. They could be antiques. We could sell them. She was put off by the whole thing. They looked too real. This kind of made her sick to her stomach. Something about all of this was off to her, and I assured her it was nothing. I thought if I showed her the trunks, she might come around, but she didn't. She was looking over them and agreed that they were old, but they made her feel worse. Along the side of the trunks, she noticed something carved into the wood. It was a cross inside a circle, inside a triangle. I told her it was probably just some kind of old identification thing. Maybe it was a hobo code from the 1930s. <laughs> These trunks were that old, but she didn't want to hear it. She told me I could keep these for this year and then I would have to get rid of them. It was too much. Everyone would think that we robbed a crypt or something. I must have spent all day working on my scene. Two skeleton witches raising the bodies of a few fallen comrades crawling out of the grave while two minions held lanterns because next thing I knew, the sun was gone and my porch light kicked on. I sat back and I admired the scene. It was good. It looked real. I grabbed the lighter and lit up all the lanterns. The orange gave the whole scene an eerie glow. Final touch. I placed those witch hats on the skeletons. Done settling. I loved it. Before I was done, Tim came jogging by, he stopped and let out a whistle. He was impressed. He asked if he could get a closer look at the skeletons. I let him. He messed around with the bones and looked the skeletons up and down. He shook his head. Oh, these are amazing. Thanks. I said, beaming. Picked him up this morning. From where? Uh, I said, the magician doesn't reveal his secrets. Huh. Well, looks like I'll have to pull out all the stops, he said, nodding goodbye and continuing with his jog. As he ran, I muttered half-jokingly, so long, nemesis. I went inside for a few beers, some TV, and a deep, satisfying sleep. It was about three in the morning when my daughter started screaming from across the house. I dashed up and I found her outside her bedroom door in tears. I asked what was wrong and all she could say was that someone was looking in her window. I grabbed a bat and I went out the front door. There wasn't anyone there, but someone was looking into her window. It was one of the skeleton witches. I walked over to the decorations and I looked down at the ground. There were footprints around the window. It looked like the skeleton had been dragged from where they had been. I figured neighborhood kids were playing a prank. Wouldn't be the first time they messed around and dragged the skeleton back to its spot. The next day when I went to work, I noticed that one of the skeletons that was on the ground seemed to have been moved around. Its bones were a bit scattered than before. And again, there were footprints, but nothing much else. I thought about getting security cameras, then I remembered how much they cost. It's just a temporary problem. In less than a month, this would be over. That night around midnight, 
I was sitting in my living room, half paying attention to whatever Netflix show I was watching and bullshitting around online. That's when I heard something outside moving around. I glanced up and nearly had a heart attack. Someone had put the witch skeleton in the living room window. After I collected myself, I listened and heard hushed whispering outside in the front yard. The kids are still there. I decided to repay the favor to scare the hell out of them. I went around to my back door and I snuck outside. It was colder than I thought. I could see my breath. I hadn't been cold inside. I tiptoed to the gate and quietly opened it. I walked softly along the side of my house, waiting to jump out and scare the kids. Right as I got to the edge of the house, I heard more hushed whispering. They were still there. I psyched myself up. Then I jumped out of my hiding spot, screaming like a goddamn madman. One of the skeleton witches fell to the ground, and I heard what sounded like footsteps on pavement running on the opposite direction. Down the street, I saw figures running away, or so it seemed. I was pissed I didn't get a good view, and that they had come back a second time. I decided to call the cops. Naturally, when the cops showed up, they looked bored with my story. They said, absence of any kind of evidence, they couldn't do anything. They could increase patrols through the area, but that was about it. They looked at the footprints and agreed that somebody had been there, but they just hopped back into their squad car and rolled away. The next night we managed to make it through without any incidents. I started to think that maybe my impromptu scaring act had worked. But the following night I heard voices again from outside my window. They had come back. Instead of scaring, I called 911 and waited for the red and blue lights to come cruising by. When they finally did, three hours later, the kids had left. The same cops from the night before, they looked less than amused. They again assured me that they'd roll more cars nearby, but honestly, didn't expect to catch anyone. They suggested I considered moving the figure in at night, or maybe getting a motion detector for the front porch light before they left. At this point, my wife wanted me to just take down the decorations. They were unsettling her, the kids weren't exactly thrilled about them, and the idiots in the neighborhood kept messing with them. I heard her, but I was also pretty adamant that these were isolated incidents and they would die down when the rest of the neighborhood decorations went up. She told me fine, but I could tell she wasn't happy with me. I promised that if anything else happened, I would take them down. She said not only would I take them down, but I would get rid of them. I agreed. For the next few days, things were fine. Felt like I had vanquished the teens with the increased police presence. The decorations didn't move again. My, my kids warmed up to them, especially when I added some fun lights around them to lighten up the mood. And even my wife had to admit that things were better. About a week later, I went out in the morning for work and noticed that the strand of lights that I had decorated the skeletons with had been removed. But they weren't gone exactly. Someone had tied them in a noose. I didn't tell anyone, I just grabbed it and tossed it in my car. That night, I decided to stay up late and make sure that no one was fucking with me. I'm not gonna lie, for a minute, I thought it was Tim. Maybe he was really intimidated by my design, but I pushed that away as being crazy. Our rivalry was fun. Not anything too serious. Tim was nice. He's been to my house. His wife had amazing lemon bars. I was just paranoid. Around one in the morning, I heard footsteps coming down the sidewalk in front of my house. It sounded like someone was running, and the dull thwack ran in the night air. I thought it might be the kids returning to fuck with my things. I moved to the living room window and peered out into the darkness. It took a minute for my eyes to adjust to the dark, but when it did, I noticed that one of the witch skeletons was missing. The goddamn kids were back at it! I needed evidence this time, so I knew I was going to have to record them in the act. Show the local cops that I wasn't crazy. I walked out my back door as quietly as I could, I pulled out my cell phone. Like the other night, I wanted to sneak up on them. But unlike the other night, I didn't want to scream at them. I got to my gate and I slowly opened it. Then I nearly passed out. The witch skeleton was standing there. I fell back, dropped my phone on the concrete, I let out a little yell, but stifled it with my hands. For some reason, I expected the skeleton to move, but it just stood there. The empty eye sockets staring forward. I stood up, dusted myself off, slid past the skeleton, I hit record on my camera, and prayed my scared yelp hadn't scared away the teens. When I got to the end of my house, I edged my phone around the corner and looked at the screen. I was expecting to see a few teens laughing and moving shit around. The camera lens struggled to focus, and when it did, I didn't see any teens. There was no laughing. There wasn't anything. 
all the decorations were gone. I walked out from behind the house, confused. I stumbled over to the lawn. I saw footprints all over, but nothing else. Where the hell had everything gone? Just then I heard footsteps running away from where I had just come from. I ran around the house and stopped, stunned. The skeleton that was standing near my gate was gone too. I felt a chill go down my spine. Maybe just... Just maybe this wasn't a neighborhood kid just fucking with me. I heard what sounded like a cackle coming from my front lawn, then saw orange in the reflection of my car's windshield. I walked back to my front yard and saw my lawn was on fire, only it wasn't just a random blaze, it was by design. It was a cross inside a circle inside a triangle, just like in the trunks. I grabbed my hose and was going to spray the fire out, but as quickly as it turned it on, the fire went out. I heard a faint cackle again. This time it sounded like it was on my roof. I didn't want to see if anything was there. I ran back into the house and locked all the doors. I stayed up for hours. The following day, I was a wreck. I, I, I didn't want to scare my family. I told my wife that she was right. The decorations were weird, and I decided to take them all down last night. She was happy at first, but then she looked out the front window and frowned. Real funny, she said, flipping me off. I went to the window. I opened it wide... And they were all back in the same place as they had been. Except the two witches' skeleton skulls had been turned, one facing my front window, the other one looking off down the street. I felt a chill run down my body. All day at work, I couldn't shake what happened. I googled the cross inside a circle inside a triangle picture, but didn't find much at first. But twenty or so pages into the search, I found something that made my heart race. The webpage said the drawing was related to witchcraft. Specifically, it was a symbol often carved into the coffins of witches that had been burned at the stake. But these symbols were old. Like 1600s old. It was thought that the symbol kept the witches' remains from acting up again. If the coffins had been opened, the witches would be free to cause havoc. As long as they were sealed and marked, things were fine. But if they were released... My mouth went dry. I felt my eye twitching. My stomach was churning. I left work early, barely able to get my boss a reason for splitting at noon. I rushed home to my empty house. I wanted these things gone before my family was home. I grabbed the trunks and I dragged them to the front yard. I started disassembling the bones and throwing everything inside those trunks. I know it sounds crazy, but I could feel them staring at me as I tossed them back into the trunks. As soon as I finished packing up the last box into my truck, I saw Tim walking towards me. He had stayed home from work. He asked me what was going on. Uh, well, the kids didn't like these. They were too scary. I decided to take them down. Oh, they were pretty realistic. Yeah. Yeah, plus the kids in the neighborhood were messing with them every night. Moving them around and shit, you know, don't want to have to deal with that anymore. Tim started laughing. <laughs> that makes sense now, he said. Thought I saw one of those things walking down the street the other night. What? I came down for a glass of water. It looked like one of them were walking down the street. I was spooked to hell at first, but realized that was crazy. It's probably kids moving them around. I forced a smile, but I... I wanted to die. Yeah... They were, they were giant assholes. I found them all over. I think I'm going to wait until closer to Halloween to put my stuff out. I don't want you to look out and see a mad scientist strolling down the street at midnight. Forced to laugh. Yeah. Well, if you don't want these, can I take them off your hands? I really admire the craftsmanship. I wanted to win the decorating contest. But not that bad. I feigned a frown. Wish you'd asked me earlier. Buddy at work has taken them. Damn. Well, at least they're going to a good home. Yeah. I slammed the gate to my truck and I said goodbye. I drove down to Shade's house and not surprisingly, she had moved out. The place looked as sinister as it had before. Worse now because it had been abandoned. Fuck it. She's getting these things back. I backed my truck into her driveway and went to go get rid of the trunks. When I opened the gate, I felt a pain in my stomach and my head start pounding. And normally I would have... I would have been laid out by the pain, but I fought through it and I quickly unloaded the trunks into Shade's empty driveway. I didn't care how they landed, only that they weren't near me. I thought I heard one of them crack when it hit the ground, but I didn't stick around to find out. I hopped back into my truck and I took off. As I drove away, I glanced in my rearview mirror and I swear... I swear I saw those skeleton witches standing in the driveway. Maybe I was seeing things. I, I didn't care. 
They were gone. They were out of my life. Things were fine the rest of the month. Halloween came and went. The Johnsons won the decorating contest again, and my family had an amazing time trick-or-treating. My wife was pleased the skeletons were gone. I just tried to forget that they were ever there. Things went back to normal. What's odd, though, is every so often, when I'm up late and the wind starts to howl, I swear to God, I hear cackling. Hey there, kids, and happy October. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to tell you a couple things that are happening this October that haven't ever happened before. First off, if you take a look at the channel, you'll notice that I'm currently live. That's right, we started up doing a Halloween horror radio program. That means 24-7 without interruption, you'll be hearing Creepypasta stories, read by yours truly, and as well as a few other guests that we've had on the channel before. The other thing are Halloween exclusive t-shirts. These t-shirts are available in the Mr. Creepypasta link down below in the description. Actually, at any point if you want to check out the description, feel free to scroll down and see what kind of cool stuff's going on down there. Oh, and of course, the Halloween countdown starts on the 18th. Look forward to seeing you all in sweet dreams. <laughs>